welcome to today's session today i'll be talking about topic in sql called as triggers but before we begin the session make sure to subscribe to our channel and also hit on the bell icon so that you will never miss an update from us agenda goes as follows firstly i'll be talking about the theory i'll be introducing what a trigger is and then i'll be talking about the differences between a stored procedure and a trigger and then i'll be explaining about the types of triggers then i'll go ahead and uh, explain the syntax to create a trigger and finally i'll be explaining an example so that we can clearly understand what a trigger is introduction so this is the definition formal definition of a trigger a trigger is a special type of stored procedure that is invoked automatically in response to an event so as we can recall a stored procedure is a set of sql statements usually a query that you can save so that the code can be reused over and over again it is like a function in a programming language basically and event here refers to a data modification made against a table that is if you make any changes to a table in a database that is called an event and also this is an alternative uh, definition so let's see what that is it is a database object that reside in the system catalog and that fires automatically when a data modification is made against a table that is when an event occurs so uh, it is called as a database object whenever we create something in the database that is called as a database object let it be a table a view trigger a stored procedure they are called as database objects and system catalog it is also called as a data dictionary so it can be viewed as a place where you can store uh, metadata like uh, data types of attributes of a table name of the table and name of the attributes etc so a trigger will be stored in the system catalog and called or fired whenever necessary now moving on to the next topic the differences between stored procedure and trigger firstly stored procedure is a set of sql statements which has to be explicitly called by the programmer and coming to trigger it is automatically called when an event occurs so how do you call a stored procedure exactly so it is done so by using the sql statement execute procedure name that is exec paste the name of the procedure you have created and stored coming to triggers it fires when a data modification is done against a table that is it fires when a trigger Uh, when an event occurs stored procedure can accept parameters and a trigger cannot accept parameters stored procedure can return a value just like a function trigger cannot return a value stored procedure can use transaction statements like uh, begin transaction and uh, roll back commit etc commit transaction and roll back statements those are transaction statements so you can use transaction statements uh, within stored procedure but you cannot use them in on triggers so moving on to the next topic that is types of triggers generally there are two types of triggers according to sql standards that is sql triggers can be broadly classified into two types let us see what they are the first uh, type is the row level trigger it fires for each row that is inserted updated or deleted insert update and delete are basically dml that is data manipulation language statements so it fires for each row for dml statements row level triggers are made for dml statements only and the second type of trigger is statement level trigger it fires only once for each event regardless of how many rows are affected so to clearly understand this uh, let me give out one a uh, example for each of the type for row level trigger imagine an audit entry uh, imagine a bank payment transaction application where uh, after each bank transaction you have to store an audit that is information about each transaction so that can be done using row level triggers suppose one row one record is filled when uh, when one particular bank transaction occurs and you write a logic for it to store the particular time in which the transaction takes place so row level triggers can be used for audit entry audit trails etc coming to statement level triggers 
uh, let's imagine a scenario let's take up the bank uh, a scenario here as well so banks during a particular time of the month that is on the month end the servers will be busy on uh, 28th to 30 or 31st of that uh, month so during these two to three days uh, we want to reject the transaction of everyone in the bank that is every customer in the bank so in order to do that you can create you can write your own logic in the statement level trigger and then set it up so that uh, a message is given out to any customer who wants to make transactions during that uh, time interval and here in this uh, tutorial I'll be talking about MySQL specifically because MySQL is the most widely used database engine and it is used for uh, general purpose scenarios and it does not support statement level triggers so we are only talking about row level triggers here when it comes to MySQL within the row level triggers there are six type of triggers let us see what they are uh, these uh, six type of triggers in MySQL are defined on uh, data manipulation language statements like insert update and delete and there are two variations for each that is before and after so that make six in total six types in total they are before insert and after insert before update after update before delete and after delete that is there are two variations for each of the dml uh, statements in total it makes six types of triggers in mysql the before variation fires before the execution of the statement that is before the execution of the insert dml statement and after uh, variation of the trigger will fire after the execution of the statement as the name suggests just a quick info guys intellipad provides microsoft sql certification training in partnership with microsoft the course link of which is given in the description below now let's move on to the syntax firstly you need to use the create uh, keyword create trigger and followed by the trigger name of your choice it's the trigger name should be unique of the schema so it should not be same as table name or the column name etc so it must be unique and next you need to mention the trigger time that is either before or after and next comes the trigger event so it will be either insert update or delete one of the dml uh, statements next you need to mention on which table you are performing or creating this trigger so you need to use the on keyword followed by the table name on which the trigger is defined next you need to use this the for each row keyword this basically says this do this for each of the row since this is a row level trigger for each row uh, line of statement is mandatory for every type of trigger in uh, mysql for every six of for each of the six uh, triggers for each row statement is a must and then comes the begin and end block within the begin and end block you can uh, do variable declarations and write the trigger code that is you can write your logic what needs to be done when the trigger is fired now before moving on to the example uh, let's see what new and old keyword are so new is a pseudo record name that refers to a new table row for insert and update operations on row level triggers old is a pseudo record name that refers to the old table row for update and delete operations on row level triggers so let me explain this in a simple way imagine a table simple table with the two columns that is customer id and age uh, suppose you want to perform an update operation on this you have mistakenly uh, written 2 instead of 3 so after updating it uh, the table will look like somewhat like this that is 33 32 34 instead of 23 22 24 so in order to access the old values of the column age you need to use old dot age that is you need to use the old keyword so if you use this you can access the old values if you use the new keyword you can access the new values of the column and uh, it can be for insert as well if you want to insert a new uh, record or a new row the new the value of the new 
row within the age column will be new that is whatever value you want to put in the new record within the for the age column will be accessed by new dot age uh, keyword so uh, let's see this with an example it will make it uh, more clear so as we have seen in the syntax you need to create a trigger by using create trigger keyword so i'm using the create trigger and the trigger name is uh, adjust rating now uh, before uh, taking a look at the example let us see the problem statement i am in my mysql uh, workbench right now and i'll be opening a simple customer table use sample so that is where my uh, table resides so i'm using the sample database right now and let me see what is inside the customer table select star from customer so when i run this as you can see there are 10 entries there are uh, attributes like customer id first name last name phone email city joining date and rating so suppose the problem statement now is I want to implement a trigger where if the data entry guy enters in a negative value for a rating as we all know we cannot and there is no negative uh, rating right so there is 0 to 5 and you can enter anything between 0 to 5 so you cannot enter a negative rating so by mistake if the data entry guy enters negative value i need to put that or convert that as zero rating so this can be done by implementing a trigger so this is a problem statement let us go ahead and uh, see how we can write the sql code for it so i'm assuming you have written down the syntax and uh, you remember the syntax so that now we can write the sql code for the mentioned problem statement that is we have to set the rating to zero if it is entered or wrongly that is if it is entered less than zero a negative value so i'm using create trigger keyword and then using adjust rating as my trigger name i want this trigger to be before insert and that is before inserting the record before inserting the row this needs to happen so the timing is before and the dml statement is insert and i'm doing this on the customer table so i'm using the on customer uh, statement and for each row is a mandatory statement that is i need to implement this for each and every row that is why i'm using this sql statement and then within the begin and end block i'm writing the logic so the logic goes something like this if new dot rating that is i want to access whatever value that is uh, entered in the new row in the new record so if i had used old dot rating here it will access the old value of the rating column so i need to access the new one that is uh, that is entered by the guy that is the data entry guy so i'm using the new keyword so the logic goes like this if new dot rating is less than zero that is if it is in a negative value then set new dot rating is equal to zero basically means if the value entered is negative put it to zero or convert it to zero and i'm ending the if statement and the begin and end block ends here so let us see how it is implemented in the mysql workbench so i'm going to the navigator box here and then i'm right clicking on the customer table and then i'm go clicking alter table so here uh, in this particular tab i have the triggers uh, button and i'll click on that on the left side there are six options that is each for uh, six type of triggers if you hover over this options you will get an icon that is a uh, plus sign which means create a new before insert trigger so i click on this and it will create pre executed code that is it will give me a syntax that is a half written syntax i only need to write the code here if you click on the plus sign it will create a new sample code 
so i only need to write my logic the trigger logic under the begin and end block so let us write it so what i want to do is if new dot rating is less than 0 then set new dot rating is equal to 0 so this is my logic and i'm ending the if statement this is the end of the begin and end block. So if I click on apply on the bottom right, so it will show me the whole code that is that will be applied on the database. So just review that if there's any changes, uh, do so and then click on apply and then finish. So now if you go to the table and uh, if you drop down the trigger, select the trigger option there's a new trigger there that which we have created right now so in order to fire this trigger i need to insert insert a row in order to fire this trigger i have to insert a new row but i have to give the value of the rating uh, column as negative and see if it uh, converts it into zero so if it converts it into zero that means my trigger is working so let's do that let us insert row in this table so let's go something like this insert into customer values so instead of uh, writing all this since we are working in mysql workbench i can just uh, edit it here and then mysql workbench will convert this entry into the sql code for me so i'll just do that so this will be 1011 and uh, let the name be xxx yyy uh, y, y. let it be some random numbers and let it be some random email and city let it be some random characters as well so date the date i i need to enter the proper format so 2017 let me ninth month and uh, let it be 13 so now this is where the trigger will fire so if i enter a negative rating that is minus 3.5 let's say and then i apply this so this is the sql statement right insert into customer table i'm entering all these value for all the attributes and then in the rating uh, attribute i've entered minus 3.5 so if i apply this and uh, do select the customer table once again so the re most recent entry is 1011 and I've entered some random values but as you can remember in the rating column I had entered minus 3.5 so it has converted into 0 that means the trigger has fired during the insert statement. So I want to end the session by the quote by Benjamin Franklin that is an investment in knowledge always pays the best interest. If you want to watch more interesting sessions like this, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you want to read blogs on recent technologies like DevOps, data science and cloud computing, you can visit our blog channel. Just a quick info guys. IntelliPad provides Microsoft SQL certification training in partnership with Microsoft. The course link of which is given in the description below.